Hello everybody, welcome to Brainy Dental. In this video, we will discuss how to make access cavity in a mandibular molar. Now this molar is much easier than a maxillary molar and if you follow the steps, you will be able to do it quite comfortably. So let's go ahead and watch. This is the occlusal surface of a mandibular first molar. It is divided by developmental grooves. This is the central groove the buccal groove, the small distobuccal groove and the lingual groove. Now these four grooves they divide the occlusal surface into five cusps. The large mesiobuccal cusp, distobuccal cusp and the small distal cusp. Then mesiolingual cusp and distolingual cusp. There are two roots, the mesial root and the distal root. The length of the tooth is around 21 millimeter. The shape of the pulp chamber is rectangular. The roof of the pulp chamber is present in the cervical one third of the crown. Now the crown can be divided into three parts, incisal one third, middle one third and cervical one third. So our roof is somewhere here. Now the floor of the pulp chamber is present in the cervical one third of the root. So in this area our pulp chamber will be present. Now three root canal orifices are expected to be found. Mesiobuccal orifice present under the mesiobuccal cusp tip, mesiolingual under mesiolingual cusp tip and distal. It is present slightly distal to the central pit. The shape of the axis cavity is trapezoid, wider on the mesial side, less wide on distal side. There are three root canal orifices, one, two and three. Now our axis cavity could have been triangular in shape, but it is not so because we have to widen on the distal side to explore for the second distal canal. And when that is present, then our shape becomes square shaped. The distal orifice is largest and oval in shape. Therefore, we begin our entry by directing the burr towards the distal side. We take a round burr, place it in the central pit and tilt it slightly distally. We've made a notch here in the enamel, but we need to go deeper in the same direction. While cutting, I felt a dip. So now with the help of a straight probe, I am exploring the area. I feel a catch here. Now I'll take a file and explore for the distal canal. I have taken 20 number because distal canals are mostly wide and here it is easily entering. So with back and forth motion I enter into the distal canal. Now I will change the direction of the bird and cut towards the mesial side and then go towards the lingual side. I'll also change the burr. Instead of round, I will take a long straight burr. Now you can see how we are proceeding towards the mesial direction. Now we'll move the burr more towards the lingual side. Now 
we will explore the mesobuccal orifice now with help of a file slowly i will enter by to and fro motion here we can have entered the canal but you see this is an overhanging tooth which is causing obstruction so we need to extend the cavity more on the mesobuccal side such that we can have an easy access After widening the access cavity, I have taken some glide and I am going to use a 10 number file to enter again into the mesiobuccal orifice. I am using glide because the orifice I felt was tight and calcified. So with help of glide, I will be easily able to enter. Now you can see we have easily entered into the mesiobuccal canal. Now, this is the mesiolingual orifice. We will try and enter with help of a file. I have taken a 10 number file and with gentle to and fro motion, I will enter deeper into the mesiolingual canal. Now in this canal, the orifice was not calcified and I did not need the help of glide to enter here. Now let us place files in all the three canals. First is the mesiolingual canal. Here we can put it inside. The next we go in for the mesiobuccal canal. Now to go deeper, I just gently move it inside. And finally the distal canal. The distal canal that we have found is more on the buccal side. Now I will try and locate an additional distal canal if it is present. For this I have to cut more on the distal lingual side. For this I have used endo z burr. It can be done with a straight burr as well. But somehow here I used this endo z burr. This is the distal canal that we had found. Now with help of this probe I move on the distal lingual side. And here I try and feel for some catch but I can't feel anything. Now with help of a file, I try and feel if I can see any dip or any orifice, but I don't feel so. So we have only one distal canal and that is on the buccal side. This is the buccal side, this is the lingual side of the tooth. Now let us observe the path of our root canals. Now this is the mesiobuccal file and it moves in this direction, that is the path of mesiobuccal root canal. This is mesiolingual, it moves in this direction, the mesiolingual canal. Let's see the distal. Now the distal moves in this direction, like this. Basically what you will observe is that a pulp chamber is present in the buccal half of the tooth like this. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. If you did, like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.